Hey guys, welcome to my first Roblox scripting tutorial. In this series, we're going to be learning how to code, how to work around Roblox Studio, how to make the stuff of dreams inside Roblox. Um, and this is the first video. We're just going to be going over what all the different windows mean inside Roblox Studio, um, how you can add parts, what you know, how you can change properties, what the output is, how to add other people's models, what all the buttons mean, that kind of thing. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. In future videos, we're going to be going over actual coding, um, adding in specific things into games. But this is just a beginner's beginner's video teaching you how to use Roblox Studio. I'm assuming you've never opened it before. So let's start on a blank page. Uh, and I really hope you guys enjoy. Okay, first of all, this is how your Roblox Studio will probably look something like this. Uh, it will have light mode on and it will have a couple of windows, but I'm not sure what. It's been a long time since I started on Roblox, about seven years. Um, so I don't really remember what mine looked like, to be honest. Um, but if you head to the view bar up here and just make sure everything is turned off, um, then yours should look exactly like mine. There shouldn't be anything on the screen uh, except for the viewport here where you can see everything. And that should be it. Okay, so to get started, to move around here, hold down the right button on your mouse, kind of like any other Roblox game, uh, and to move around, WASD will move you around forward, backwards, right and left. Uh, if you want to use E and Q, you can move up and down. Uh, and something not many people know, if you hold down Shift, then when you're moving, you're going to move real slowly. So these are just how you move around in Roblox Studio. Get used to flying around because um, that's what you're going to be doing a lot of, <laughs> a lot of flying around. Um, and this is just how you're going to see all of your models, see everything you've placed into the game, um, so you can see what it's going to look like when someone plays your game. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, you don't have to copy me, but I'm going to head into settings, and you can see here you can change the theme from light to dark. My eyes are just going to die if I have it on bright constantly, so I'm going to keep mine on dark. Um, but I don't mind if you have yours on light, Dark is better though, in my opinion. Uh, if you're sat here for a long period of time, if you want to be making games, if you want to sit here for five or six hours in a row, even longer, 12 hours, um, then you probably want to have dark mode because otherwise your eyes are going to perish um, after all that time. Okay, so let's start adding some windows. The main windows you want to have are Explorer and Properties. These will let you see everything that's inside the game, inside the workspace, everything that's inside the environment, and Properties will let you change anything about those so you'll be able to change the color of things or where they are or what their size is all these things can be done through properties uh, other windows i recommend having open is the output uh, you'll be able to see all the errors from any scripts and anything that the game's trying to tell you that's going wrong um, that's useful for debugging and making sure things are working correctly i usually have the toolbox open i don't use it very often but it just kind of fills the space i like having the screen in the middle i much prefer it to having it on the side uh, and I usually have Game Explorer open, uh, which you probably won't use very much. Um, I use it to just add images. It essentially just shows you all the places, all the badges, all the products, images, meshes, packages inside your game. Um, probably won't use it too often, but this is how I have mine set up. I like to have mine kind of like this. It uh, means I can do everything I want to do. Okay, so let's work through this top bit first. Uh, at the top we have Home, Model, Test, View, and Plugins. Uh, if we go home, then you can just see we've got a bunch of things. Uh, you can see that there's kind of shortcuts to other parts of the studio here. So play, uh, part of the test, you can actually do inside test, surprisingly. Um, this is where I usually go to. I don't really use any of these, to be honest. Um, you can add parts by right-clicking, um, which is what I prefer to do, or over here on Workspace. You can add UI by clicking it in the UI section. Um, I don't usually use a lot of these, but you can if you want to. Game settings is kind of useful. You can change things about the avatar, R15, R6, um, all these other things, gravity. Uh, so if you select a part, if you select the base plate, for example, you'll see nothing happens. But if I change tools, if I change the selection mode to uh, move, uh, which you can also do by pressing control and two, uh, then you can now move around the base plate like this. And I'm just going to do control Z to undo it. Uh, you can scale it to change its size, uh, and you can also uh, you can also rotate it in any way, shape, or form. Um, useful all the time. You'll be using that all the time. If you head into model up here, you'll be able to use all of these tools again, and also you'll be able to change 
a snap to grid, the incrementation. Uh, so you'll be able to change how much you can rotate by. So if I change this to 100, you'll see that when I rotate, it's kind of a lot more jerky. Uh, it doesn't look like it's rotating very much, I realize, um, but it is rotating a lot. Clear example, if I do 45, say, you can see it's rotating 45 degrees. Um, I like to have it on five and one, quite a lot of things, um, but you know, you can have it on whatever you like. You kind of change these as you're going. Test, this is where you can test your game. So if I click play now, everything will freeze up and then suddenly it's like I'm playing Roblox inside the studio. This is just how you'll test your game and see if everything's working correctly and look around and make sure everything's good. Uh, here you're also able to start a server, a local server. So if I click start now, two players will appear and I'll have a server as well. Uh, it's kind of useful for testing things which need more than one player. So if I wanted to make a sword and I could see is it doing any damage, is it working properly when I hit someone else, then I just start a local server with two people um, and then you can hit yourself essentially uh, and see if it works correctly. Emulator, pretend you're on a phone. Um, useful if you're making a game and you want to make sure it's working on phone correctly. Uh, view we've already used, that's just where you can view different windows and then plugins is where you can get different plugins. You can find loads on the website which just help you with Roblox Studio um, and doing different things much easier, adding shortcuts uh, to things that would usually take much longer. So let's head over here to the Explorer. As I said this kind of shows everything uh, that's inside the environment, inside the game that the player is going to see, and they'll all be inside workspace. So here I've got base plate, I've got terrain, there's actually no terrain, but this will hold terrain. Uh, base plate here, if I head down to properties, you'll see I can change, if I change brick color, for example, and make it red, then you can see suddenly my base plate has turned a horrific bright red inside my workspace, uh, which I don't really want. It, I think it's originally on dark stone gray, uh, but obviously this is you can change colors of things, you can change the material, uh, make it grass or I don't know, whatever you want to do. Uh, that can all be done inside properties. Uh, and yours will probably have studs on top, so uh, your top service will be studs. I've changed mine to smooth just by habit. Um, I much prefer smooth, but do whatever suits you. Um, and you can change size and everything else inside here. And you've got all these other services in here that aren't workspace. These you'll kind of get to know over time. They're all for different uses. So these three are generally used for doing things on the client. So like UI, doing things on your on one player screen, but not on anyone else's. These two were used by the server. So to store things and run scripts. those That's where you put things for the server. Here, replicated storage and replicated first. That's where you'll put things which both the server and the client can see. Uh, lighting, this just controls all the lighting values. I've already changed mine, so it's on the shadow map because I like that technology, which is the newest one. Uh, you can also change the ambience and the color shifts and everything on here to do with lighting. You can add sky. Uh, you can make fog appear. So now you can see there's kind of a white fog after a thousand. Now I've added a black fog. You know, diff different things to do with lighting in this section. And then we've got players, and this will just hold all the players. Um, and so you can change different things about them. So you'll be able to change uh, the, the amount of currency they have, the camera, max camera distance, that kind of thing per player. Uh, that's all the Explorer. So the properties obviously shows all the properties. We've already covered the output, just showing all errors. The toolbox is something you might use if you're first getting started making a game. Uh, so from here, you're able to put in anything that people have made available to the public. So all these ones that have uh, this symbol are kind of uh, featured models, I guess, um, from the Roblox company itself. So Quenty appears a lot here. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, you can add all these things. So if I just click and drag a pine tree here, now I've got a pine tree. Don't know why. Uh, can add a military base and a and a pole. Yeah, you can add all things and you can select them all just by dragging. I'm going to delete them all uh, with delete on my keyboard because <laughs> I don't really want them. But you can add all things from toolbox. You can search whatever you want. There's loads of free models. That's pretty much a walkthrough of Roblox Studio. Just what all these different windows do. I know it can be overwhelming at the start. If you want to just before you watch the next video, just fly around a bit. Uh, just have some fun, add in some different things, maybe add some terrain. If you go to view and then terrain editor, you've got all these things you can generate, massive worlds with this really cool terrain editor. Um, just make a little world before the next video. And on the next video, I'll be getting into actually coding, actually making things that you'll be able to make yourself so that you don't just take things from the toolbox.
So now if you save the game, uh, if I add in a tree or something so you can see that I've actually saved the game, uh, the shortcut is Alt P. Um, I use Alt P all the time, but you can also go to File and Publish. They have these other save options, so saving just your computer, saving but not actually publishing it to the game, so you're kind of saving it in the cloud rather than publishing it to everyone else. And then publishing is obviously updating the game. If I close this window, so this is the games page, um, the game page for the game I was just editing, and you can see it says only you can play because this game is private. I think there's a limit still to how many games you can make public at one time, um, so this means only you can play it, no, no one else, none of your friends, nobody else from anywhere on the website will be able to play it until you go into configure game and change this to public. You can also change a bunch of other things, but just if you make sure that's public, um, then all your friends can play your game as well. So if I head into the game, it's like playing anything else, playing any of the games on the front page, uh, you'll, you'll spawn in, it'll just be like a normal game except there's just a tree. Um, <laughs> so it's a bit of a blank, blank place, but... That's how you make a game, that's how you publish a game, that's how you use kind of Roblox Studio at a really basic level. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you are now really inspired to go and make your own game. If you are, please consider sticking around, subscribe if you're new, um, I'm hopefully going to be making loads more tutorials in the future, so I look forward to those, and I'll see you again in the next video.